everyone and welcome to another episode of Newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in these videos we tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, I'll be hosting both of my videos this week at their regular times also, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We couldn't do the Mythic Plays one last week as scheduling didn't allow it. Having kids is often restrictive in that sense. Now, we do have a bunch of tidbit type information for a few of our projects today, so let's get to it. For Joan of Arc 1.5 today, we have the updated components lists and counts for each box for you. Essentially, this is the list of what you should have received. So, for example, in the core box, you should have 11 tarot-sized intrigue cards according to this list. If you only have 10, you should have 11. And when replacement requests open for Joan of Arc, you would need to contact the hub uh, concerning that. Please note, however, that three bowmen, three musicians, and three standard bearers in both English and French are missing. And this is a mistake from version 1 that carried over into 1.5. These are not in the components lists here. We are aware of this, however, and their omission here has to do with the research we're doing for the replacements we will ultimately need to send. I'll put the links in the description below to both the PDF file and an Excel sheet that will simply complement the PDF with a bit more of a detailed component count. On the shipping and fulfillment front, Asia and Brazil are still in the fulfillment process and will end up finishing last. All late orders and missing orders for the EU should be in the hands of backers by the end of the week. If you still don't have your pledge or are still missing items from your pledge other than the RPG elements or the items that we are replacing from known issues, please email our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net on Monday. Late and missing orders in the US are still pending as we try to consolidate our inventory into one hub. We're working as best we can on that too, so please be patient and we'll keep you posted as things progress. For Solomon Kane today, we wanted to make note that all hubs will be discontinuing the replacement of the Maryland miniature in the Against the Vampires expansion for the time being. It was brought to our attention that this may be a potential miscast. And after some back and forth with the factory, we've confirmed that it was a factory mistake and we have Dust reprinting 6,000 minis and they will be air shipping them to the hubs in March. The reason we're asking for you to hold off on your replacement requests for right now is that our hubs can't send the replacements out until they get the new minis from the factory. On the shipping and fulfillment front, just a reminder that our Australia and New Zealand backers will have their products boat arriving in port on Thursday, February 17th, and can expect their fulfillment to begin shortly thereafter. Just a short shipping and fulfillment update for Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 today. All the containers for the EU are in at this point, so be on the lookout for those address verification emails to start showing up in the near future. Two containers bound for our North America hub have yet to come in, but they are still on the way, so be patient there. The containers bound for our backers in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK are arriving in port this week, which means that fulfillment should begin in those regions shortly thereafter. For Darkest Dungeon this week, we'd like to discuss further the matter of the core box insert, as there have been several generalizations and misconceptions surrounding it. As a company, we aim to offer the best possible product and facilitate most of our customers' needs. The box design is the very last stage in the production process, as we need to have all components locked and final to start making any prototypes or designs, and this is a unique part of the process for each one of the games we create. When we run a Kickstarter campaign, we express our intentions and what we hope we will be able to achieve. This is one of the uncertainties that we are aware of, and we try to clarify that with the campaign disclaimer mentioning that everything is a work in progress and is subject to change. Now that we have a component count, we can work with the factory on all of the box aspects, size, design, and insert. When considering designing the box, there are several points that we need to consider. 
Components need to not only fit, but also be well protected. At the same time, we need to remain within the manufacturing price constraints and in line with our pledge manager pricing, especially regarding shipping costs, which due to the shipping crisis is proving to be extremely challenging. Consequently, we need to adjust our box design accordingly and avoid having as little empty space as possible while maintaining a high quality product that will arrive safely. For Darkest Dungeon, we've created a new design for the box interior that we believe works well based on the above constraints. All your cards will come in separate decks based on their type, each of which will be in a corresponding deck box. These deck boxes, when put together, will help keep the tile components in place. There's also some space to keep the tokens organized in separate Ziploc bags. Now, we are working with the factory to have a layout printed in the box so that you know how to pack everything back in once you've taken items out. This configuration also leaves some space in the box and we were left with the decision. Should the box fit sleeve cards or the darkest organizer? We have had requests from a significant number of backers for each, but the box size is already such that it can't accommodate both. So, we made the decision to have the darkest organizer fit in the box and not the sleeved cards. Here's our reasoning. Having the darkest organizer fit in the box is going to decrease setup time and is going to make playing a game easier as you won't have to search through Ziploc bags, put everything on the table, and go through piles of various tokens to find what you need. Additionally, Darkest Dungeon is not a board game where the cards are in your hands all the time. You mainly play with your miniatures and the dice and use the cards as a source of information. It's not a card game, it's a miniature board game with cards. Therefore, it felt like a good trade-off to cut sleeve card space to ensure that the token organizer fits the box to have less setup time when you want to delve into the dungeon. Now, we'd also like to clarify that this decision that was made for the Darkest Dungeon core box to not accommodate sleeve cards is a unique situation. As mentioned before, each game has its own restrictions and is a unique case. We're currently preparing other games to go to the factory, each with different needs and components, and each will have a different design to accommodate those needs. Some will have plastic inserts, others will follow the Darkest Dungeon interlocking component system, others will have cardboard inserts, some will fit sleep cards, and some, like Darkest Dungeon, will not. We'll be sharing further information about each of our games individually, for this matter, in the future. Finally today, we also want to share with you the design for the Darkest Tapestry. It is 1050 by 700 millimeters in size, and as you can see, it has the designated spaces for your hero and monster stances, your room tile, your initiative cards, your dungeon tile, and several decks of cards. Please note that this playmat is meant to only accommodate the tiles of the core box and the location expansions. You'll not be able to use it with the Color of Madness, as this standalone expansion has a different board size that won't fit in the space on the playmat. With regards to production, we are now at the very last stage. We have received the final approval from Red Hook and are dispatching everything to the factory. But rest assured, we will keep you posted about the progress as much as we possibly can. Hello Necromancers! It's been a little while since the last time we updated you because we are preparing things. We're still making adjustments to the files and cross-checking everything, but that's not the only business we've been up to. As you may have guessed, yes, we've worked on the Pledge Manager and it's coming sooner rather than later. We aim to open it tomorrow on Wednesday, February 16th. Now, as a reminder, the Pledge Manager is the place where you finalize your order, select the language of your game, and pay for shipping and VAT. You may also add a few items, or even upgrade your Pledge if you wish. For the first time, though, the Pledge Manager will happen on our website. This is something that we've wanted to do for a long time, and we've finally got around to it. You'll simply have to go to www.mythicgames.net with your game found address, and you'll be able to access the Pledge Manager. So, see you there on Wednesday, February 16th.
Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show because frankly, you just never know what Leo's going to pull off. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my other two videos, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday. And that's it for today. Once again, stay safe and play some games while you're at it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.